European Society for Medical Oncology is preparing to welcome over 20,000 oncology professionals, policymakers, and patient advocates from over 130 countries every day. From disease treatment to patient care, the leading theme of this year is intended to bring clinical research closer to patient needs. Four full days of Congress program, including three presidential symposia, four joint symposia, and 13 ad hoc special interest sessions will be held in Copenhagen, and we'll see the participation of more than 500 invited speakers. I expect new technology, new standard for therapy. To hear the results from the recently uh, completed clinical trials. To find out the latest data in solid tumor oncology and also get the perspective from the Europeans. I guess just to learn about all the new emerging therapies. The new information about the clinical trials, uh, the guidelines uh, for oncology practice. Uh. Something else about uh, especially colorectal and breast cancer. Some news about uh, cancer treatment especially. Innovations in immunotherapy, I think so. Big data sessions, patient engagement sessions and really getting a grasp on particularly where small molecule therapies are going over the next few years. Why we are here? The boundary of cancer is growing in Europe and the rest of the world. We should be aware that we can improve <coughs> the quantity and the quality of life of our patients throughout the better programs for prevention as well as early diagnosis and appropriate treatment for initial disease and for metabolic disease. With these words, ESMO President Fortunato Giardiello opens the annual ESMO Congress. With him, ESMO 2016 Scientific Chair Andre Cervantes features the not-to-miss sessions and events. The Prime Minister of Denmark, Lars Luke Rasmussen, concludes the opening ceremony. No matter who we are, no matter what we do, at the end of the day, we are all at risk of being the next patient or the next relative. So we are in this together. So let's join forces. Let's inspire and learn from each other across Europe and across the world. Let us work towards a better future for cancer patients and their loved ones. And let us meet the future challenges together with the knowledge that we have done everything <coughs> in our power to be prepared. Once again, welcome to Copenhagen. ESMO annually honors members who make an outstanding contribution to medical oncology. This year, Alberto Sobrero from the IRCCS San Martino in Genova, Italy, received the ESMO Award statuette for his world-renowned research activity in gastrointestinal cancer. The ESMO Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Richard Pito of the University of Oxford's Nuffield Department of Population Health UK, and the Hamilton Fairley Award is given to Carlos Caldas of the Cancer Research UK Cambridge Institute, University of Cambridge, UK. Knowledge is power. This is why educating patient advocates has become increasingly important to share accurate medical information and address decision-making for cancer patients. With this in mind, the Patient Advocacy Programme is richer than ever and will take place over the four days of Congress. Today focuses first on the knowledge that we as patient advocates actually have, how we can leverage that knowledge to generate data in our networks, and then finally, what we can do in order to live better, because this is of course what this is all about. It is not just about saving lives, but for living better. Many of the topics in the advocacy tracks are actually not specific to patient advocates, because we have, for example, a special session on risk-sharing agreements, how to make innovative, new, expensive drugs accessible to a wider patient population, which are of interest to everyone, or should be of interest to everyone who is attending this conference. In this direction, ESMO has launched a new concept of the patient advocacy track. In the past, the patient advocacy track was a parallel track to all scientific tracks, which forced advocates to choose between either the advocacy track or the scientific program. I believe there has been a lot of movement in patient advocacy over the last two, three years, and it's increasingly recognized that patient advocates contribute a very specific and unique perspective 
for the greater benefit of every stakeholder in the healthcare process.